All right, <laughs> so there's a story behind this. Hi, my name is Kimberly, and welcome to Kimberly Sandbox. Back in 2015, I decided I was going to figure out a way to be able to liberate my life so that I could travel and feel like I was truly living. And after one hell of a year in 2020, 2021 came and everything came together. It's a beautiful Saturday and I am actually back at Chamlay Cafe here at the, I think it's the Star Bay Resort in Lamai. And the reason why I'm back here today is because I really like it over here. It's peaceful, it's, it's nice, the people are great, the service is great, the pool's nice, I typically have it all by myself, and the food is really, really good. So I'm gonna go ahead and share with you today what I get for my nice lunch. And I'll give you a few updates too on what's going on with some of the things in my life and what we're doing here in Koh Samui. So I'll catch you in a few minutes. And it looks like they're actually set up for people to be down here at the pool. I am going to be the first one to think here today. And it is a gorgeous day here today. Gorgeous day. I'm gonna take a walk along this beautiful beach. And I can't believe that they are really trying to get this country open and start taking away a lot of the restrictions come November 1st. So with that being said, the dynamic of this island, I anticipate, will be gradually changing from somewhat peaceful, hardly any traffic, <laughs> to all kinds of stuff going on here, big parties and everything else. Although. I think we're a ways out from big parties. But I am seeing a lot more people here uh, kicking around, you know, town. I have noticed that Chuang is busier and traffic has picked up a bit there as well. Definitely seeing foreigners, more people, you know, from other countries around town, going in and out of shops and things, more shops open. So that's pretty exciting. It's pretty exciting, certainly for Thailand. I know Thailand is ready to be having, you know, tourism back here and get this economy rocking and rolling again. And with Dave, um, seeing the changes, of course, with these restrictions, he is eyeballing flights. So before you know it, um, he will be venturing back here. And I will then again have my partner in crime here to go running around doing fun stuff with. I miss him tremendously. Um, on a more serious note, um, my brother is back in the hospital, so I'm not really sure uh, what's going to play out there. Uh, he is very ill 
it is very serious um, and I just don't know it could go either way at this point as far as you know do I need to go back there or will he just have a bump in the road just like he had a few weeks ago and end up being discharged um, one thing that has definitely changed though is I think my brother's realization that him being in a home environment is no longer really a safe thing for him uh, and it's really not ideal for my 78 you know year old mother um, trying to juggle his care um, and you're probably wondering why I have not been super engaged in that whole dynamic. And I will tell you that over the years it has been extremely challenging uh, for me as a medical professional to, you know, see things that I didn't really agree with behaviors that shouldn't have been done, things that happened. And, you know, I, I've i always tried to give the best advice, but you know, when people don't take it, there's not much I can do about that. Um, so, and that really kind of just goes for everything. You know, there's only so much I can do. I can lead a horse to water, you know, but you can't make them drink and that's, really where I stand at this point. I have stepped in a few times, you know, paid some bills and things to help out financially down there with my mom and brother. And, um, and I don't mind doing that. But I also have felt over the years that people have to kind of help themselves and make wise decisions and, and listen to advice especially when it's coming from someone who always means the best of intentions and cares so much. So, yeah, I've had my challenges and at this point I have left it in God's hands because I have no control over the situation. And as long as, as long as my brother, you know, feels he's capable and so forth to care for himself, I mean, he feasibly could change his mind last minute and say, no, I'm going home. Um, and that's what it will look like. Gorgeous day, gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous day. And today I actually put on a pair of shorts I haven't worn in a while and they were a little baggy on me. Things were fitting a lot looser. Um, definitely I've seen some changes. So you guys know I was on a mission to get back into shape, kind of cool it on the amount of calories I was eating because Dave and I were really enjoying ourselves when he was here, eating all kinds of things. So I really backed down on that and I've been hitting the gym hard. So I'm gonna share with you guys some of my pictures of my progress of before and after. Um, it's been about maybe six weeks or so since Dave left and I decided to really kind of work on this stuff um, and I probably have at least another I would say another three weeks to go before he arrives I'm anticipating maybe mid November third week of November sometime I'm hoping uh, he will get here before Thanksgiving so we can spend that together so speaking of Thanksgiving I don't know. I haven't started doing any research or even bouncing it around on the Kosamui pin board. 
on the Facebook sites there to see if there are any local restaurants or businesses that offer, you know, more of an American and Americanized type Thanksgiving meal. Because I certainly won't be cooking one. I don't have a stove, you guys. I don't have a stove. I just have a cooktop. And there's only so much you can do with a cooktop. <laughs> so, um, I suppose I could just get a rotisserie chicken and see if I could come up with some sort of stuffing, right? Um, on the cooktop. I haven't seen any stovetop stuffing kicking around here in any of the stores. But, um, I would prefer to just go out to a meal and enjoy you know, Thanksgiving out and about here on Kusamui. So if any of you have any places you know of that are offering uh, Thanksgiving dinner here on Kusamui, do share with that. Share with me um, that information in the comments. I'd really appreciate it. And about a week after Thanksgiving, it will be my 51st birthday. Woohoo! <laughs> so we'll figure out some way to celebrate that here. And you know, I have to just, just kind of talk loosely about all this stuff because really I don't know if things really start to go south with my brother. I'm really not gonna have much of a choice. I'm gonna have to go back. And of course, I would want to be there anyway, right? So. Um, but right now, he's, they're doing everything they can for him. And, um, I'm just kind of waiting to see to see what the needs are going to be, what my mom's going to need from me. Um, one good thing, though, I mean, my mom was very overwhelmed with these massive mesquite trees in the back of her house and they were constantly dropping all kinds of stuff and mesquite trees if you're not familiar they're really a messy tree in arizona they grow really really fast which is a good thing if you have a new build and you want shade quickly however they're extremely difficult to keep up so she had those trees planted not realizing how much of a demand it was going to put on her to try and keep them up and I mean, she's 78 years old she shouldn't be up on ladders clipping trees back right and so uh, I think she's she's also kind of coming to terms with the fact that she shouldn't be doing these things anymore um, and I don't want her doing these things anymore and trying to tell her to stop doing these things it's like nearly impossible um, but yeah so we got a tree guy to go in and took down one of her trees and trim back the other one significantly so at least that was able to de-stress her a little bit it was something that's really been bugging her i um, glad at least we can do something like that, you know? I think it's the little things that make such a difference, right? This is gorgeous. I just love it here. It's so peaceful. There's one other couple here, and they're in the restaurant area, and they have the cutest little girl been watching them play with her and stuff. She's fascinated with the pool. She's just barely walking. So cute. Just makes me think of my boys. And certainly because I haven't talked about them doesn't mean that I'm not thinking about them. I actually think about them almost constantly. Um, they're both in the military. The oldest is 27. And he's been in the military for quite a few years now, Navy, and our youngest one just enlisted this past spring, uh, turned 18 in April, and within a few weeks after that, he shipped off for the Air Force. So empty nesting, guys, is not easy. It's real. It's a very real thing. It's taking me quite a bit of time to get adjusted. I will say that Kosamui has really helped me and just the distraction factor. I needed something to get my mind off. I thought 
fact at how quiet everything was at home. Um, it did, it just got super quiet at our house and the whole dynamic of everything that I knew changed. And it's definitely an adjustment. I am certainly extremely happy for both of them. They're both doing exactly what they had hoped to do. They're striving for very specific careers in the military. And you know, the military is not something I think most parents would choose for their kids, for sure. I mean, it'd be great to just see my boys go off to college and, you know, get a, a typical kind of career, but I have to say, my boys just aren't typical. My husband and I aren't typical. It just makes sense, right? You're married and you're not typical people. You don't have typical kids and uh, they are far from that. So if I were to describe my boys, uh, my oldest one, he's the talker. He will talk about all kinds of stuff. He is also the one that puts a lot of thought into things. Um, he is the warrior. Uh, he's also extremely driven, extremely self-motivated. Uh, I mean, this kid, ran his first marathon when he was 17 years old with me. And um, I've never really had to push him. He would be setting his alarm at four o'clock in the morning to go out and do training and get ready for certain endeavors he's set his mind to. The youngest one, he is more internalized. Little voice over there. He's more internalized. He, he thinks about things very much, but He's not one to really talk a lot about his thoughts and things. You kind of have to pull that information out of him. Um, but he's also driven in his own way. I mean, in Muay Thai, he just, he was incredible with what he was doing in Muay Thai and his sport. And he, I'd say he's more of the hugger uh, the older one, it took him a little while to kind of warm up to hugging and he's moved on from just the pat on the back and now he'll actually give you a squeeze. Uh, they're almost nine years apart. They're so different, but at the same time, they have some things that really are similar in there, just in the way they are. And they are just hard workers and they are far from a kid that thinks that you know the world owes them something they acknowledge how much they have to work for everything that they get uh, they are just exceptional and Dave and I could not be prouder nor could we say how lucky we really are to have them as our boys I took Bella for the first time down to the beach um, this morning post-surgery and you know I just been very cautious about getting her down here I didn't want her to not be walking so good and stuff just in case if a dog came running out after her or something um, but no dogs this morning we walked probably just a mile which was a good start for her because I had been walking her out in our resort area just out and about there just to get her legs stretched and stuff because she's got all the incisions like up underneath her arms from where they took off those fatty tumors that she had. So she's doing really well. So her appointment went well yesterday. They put her back on antibiotics for another week and gave me some medication for her to chill her out next Friday when I have to bring her back in for her suture removal. But everything looks good. So far, so good there, guys.
All right, so I got the spring rolls and that's my coconut smoothie. And those spring rolls, I believe are 89 baht. So what does that work out to be? Eh, gosh, 89 baht. It's gonna be like $2 and maybe 50 cents, something like that. Look how good those look. Very good, nice and crispy. Good amount of veggies in there. Good chili sauce for dipping. Yeah, well worth it, very good. I'm wrapping up my day here at Chamlay Cafe and I just really enjoyed coming down here. It's just so nice. I mean, check this out. It's just so pretty in here. These gardens are awesome. And I just spent 200 baht and that included a little tip. So between my coconut smoothie and my spring rolls, which were really good. I mean, all in all, that's like, it's like six bucks for the day, you guys. I mean, I just spent several hours here being waited on and had that beautiful view in the pool. Can't go wrong. And so one thing I found about coming here to this resort, right around 2.30ish or so, three o'clock, the sun kind of starts going behind the palm trees and the mosquitoes come. So you start getting hit by mosquitoes. So right about that time is when I know I've done myself in and stayed my max time here. See those skies above the hills over there? That is also another reason why I decided to start heading out because I know there's a storm coming and I can hear it off in the distance. All right, so one thing I am gonna do is I am gonna actually stop outside of my resort on Ring Road and I am gonna pick up a chicken. And this guy makes the best rotisserie chickens for 150 baht, which is less than four bucks. You get this really nice chicken, carlap ball for you and um, I think it's another like 10 or 15 baht I think for the sticky rice on the side if you want that to go with it and they serve this chicken with some sauces as well for kind of dipping um, one of these chickens feeds me for a few days I pick off of it I've made you know chicken salad with it oh so good so good so tender and I really enjoy this so I'm gonna get one of those and that will be my dinner this evening so spring rolls won't cut it for me for the day I am here and my resort entry is right down there where you see that reddish color building and across from there is the Nala Linda it's a restaurant like resort area so if you drive down Ring Road you go past those two you're gonna come right here to this corner and there's this chicken guy here and he does really awesome chicken. And this is where I'm coming to get my chicken today. So look at these awesome, awesome rotisserie chickens. And this nice gentleman here is gonna cut one up for me. Swati Ka, I'm making a video for YouTube. <laughs> Can I have a chicken? So look how good these chickens are. And he does such an awesome business here. He's very popular. Everybody drives by here and picks up chickens. And then he will go ahead and he will cut this up for me on the board. Yes, please. So one interesting thing about the chickens is they cook the chicken with the head and the feet on. So he'll trim all that off for me and cut it all up. And then here in this blue container, he has the sticky rice. So these chickens are 150 baht. 
and then it's a little extra for the rice. And he's right across from the, let's see, so let me see what this resort name is here, right here. I want to say it's uh, Palm D Resort. So if you're driving down Ring Road, before you head down here to, there's a big Chinese uh, temple on the right hand side. You'll come here and stop here for the chicken. So usually I pick up two chickens. I like to buy the lady on the corner um, a chicken every so often as well. Um, but I didn't have the right amount of money on me. So um, I will probably end up just coming back later in the week and pick up another one because I like to snack on this. It's you know definitely a better choice rather than eat a bunch of cookies and stuff. And then I'll pick her up one as well. So yeah, you gotta come to this chicken guy, guys. If you're on Ring Road, again, if you're heading south, coming through Lamai, and heading down here towards the Chinese temple where the big fish market is and stuff, um, you're gonna wanna pull in on the left-hand side here and pick up a chicken. Good stuff. And definitely one thing about Kursamui, it's like the weather, it can be so fickle. Like, I just thought it was gonna storm and now it doesn't look like it's gonna storm. So, who the heck knows? I'll just probably take a dip in the pool now, being that the sun's still out. I'm going to enjoy it. All right. <laughs> so there's a story behind this. The lady that lives down on the corner in the entrance to my resort, um, she, I believe, is Burmese. And so is her friend. And I pulled over and I tried to ask her about her makeup. Well, she ran in her house and she gave me some of her makeup. <laughs> so... She um, went ahead and applied it to my face and uh, I'm just cracking up because it's the sweetest thing ever. She is such a hoot. And um, she, I guess she does like chocolate and peanut butter. I was asking her with, uh, with my Google Translate, so I'm gonna make her some treats. But, you know, this is just, it's just awesome. I had to share. Okay, bye.